Hello. Uh, okay, in this video, I, uh, I'm i going to pick a random bug from a third party uh, open source project and dig into it and diagnose it and hopefully fix it. Uh, I love watching other people solve bugs. And uh, so, you know, maybe you'll find uh, this one, you'll find it helpful watching me uh, solve a bug yourself. Um, First time I've done one of these. If you find this useful and you'd like another video like this, then please do uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you. Um, so the, the, the open source project I've chosen is this one. It's Lazy Git by Jesse Duffield. And Lazy Git, uh, as the uh, description says, there is a simple terminal UI for Git commands. Um, so in other words, if you uh, go into... Um, a directory that has a git repo in it and uh, run lazy git then you get this nice UI and um, you can do all sorts of fancy things in here it's really good fun uh, if I mean you know depending on your definition of the word fun I like it it's great um, and I've actually contributed to lazy git once in the past and I found that the code base was like really nice and clean, well organized, well documented. So it felt like a good place to start to go digging around for a random bug. Um, so I had a look in the issues a bit earlier and this one caught my eye. This uh, bug here, it was only opened a few days ago and um, it looks fairly straightforward and it's also got uh, very straightforward steps to reproduce the bug. So we should be able to get this, uh, you know, we should be able to reproduce this really easily. If I can't reproduce a bug, it's really, really hard to make any progress because, um, you know, it, it's, it's very difficult to understand whether you've actually fixed the bug or not. Um, so let's have a look. Let's try reproducing this. So I've got lazy get installed and it's up to date. Um, so I'm just going to copy these uh, repro steps. Let me maybe uh, go to my, um, uh, my home directory and I'll do make dir test and cd into test and then uh, remove test. Okay and now run lazy git. Okay so so it didn't fail. Um, lazy git opened just fine. Um, the um the the bug report says that when you do these steps uh lazy git should crash but then i noticed a bit further down that in the version info that they've submitted uh this person's using linux and i'm using mac os uh, sonoma and this feels like exactly the sort of thing that might behave differently between different operating systems uh, so let's try reproducing this on um, uh, reproducing this on Linux. And so the way I'm going to do that is using a tool called Orbstack. Um, so I've been using Orbstack for a while and it's fantastic. It's it's advertised as a drop-in replacement for Docker desktop. So it's particularly useful for running Docker containers and it has Kubernetes support, as you can see. But it also has this uh, feature where you can create virtual machines. Um, and this is kind of analogous to the way you can run Linux distributions on Windows now with the Windows subsystem for Linux. So if you ever use that on a Windows PC, this, this is very similar functionality. Um, for Mac OS. And as you can see here, I've, I've created a couple of machines already. Ubuntu is my default machine. And um, so because it's my default, I can go into it by just typing orb. Um, and now I'm in an Ubuntu uh, distribution. If I type new name, you can see that I'm running Linux now. Uh, so Cool, cool. Control D to come out of there. Um, so how are we going to test if this bug happens on um, Linux? 
well i could install lazy git on that linux uh distribution um but i'm going to have to check out the source code for lazy git in order to try and fix this bug so what i could do once i've got the source code checked out is just build it locally on um in my ubuntu machine uh, so i'm going to go to oops the directory where i've got lazy git checked out and i've already created a branch for this issue uh, and then if i go back into orb what actually let me just show you this my my current working directory is that right so on my mac it's users sign and source third party lazy git if i run it if i open orb you can see from a prompt there that um, my mac file system is accessible inside the linux machine so i'm still in the same directory that i was in when i was back in mac os but i'm now in ubuntu in that same directory um, if i come out of here and do an ls and then go into orb and do an ls again the layout is a little bit different because I'm using different shells in, in Mac OS and Linux, but you can see I'm in the same directory there. And I've already got Go installed in my Ubuntu VM. So I can actually just run go build dot. And now I've got a lazy git executable built for Linux. Um, it's super cool. Honestly, Orbstack is just uh, one of the best pieces of software I've come across in ages. Um, okay, so I've got a lazy git uh, installation, or I've got a lazy git binary rather, and I can run it normally, and it will tell me, you know, tell me stuff about the current repo. Just bear with me because the dog is barking. All right, sorry about that. Uh, he might make an appearance later. Um, Okay, so where were we? So we built lazy git for Linux. Um, so now I can try the steps to reproduce again. Um, now I can't create uh, a folder called test because I've already got a folder called test. So let's just create a folder called uh, delete me and I'll cd into delete me and then I'll remove the folder and then I'm going to run my lazy git that I've just built, boom. And now I get exactly the error that's shown in this, um, uh, in this bug report. Um, my one is formatted a little differently, uh, but you can see that we've got um, uh, app.go line 55 is where the error <coughs> is, um, originating okay so let's jump in and start poking around um, and uh, so I'm going to drop out of orb for a second and uh, just open this folder in um, open this folder in Visual Studio Code and the file we're looking for is uh, package slash app slash app dot go, which is this one. And um, we were getting the error around about here, line 55. So we go to line 55. That's the line that, that we're getting the uh, complaint from. And so this bit of code inside this run function is um, creating a new app by calling this new app um, factory method and this is this is common in go that you get methods that return sorry I'm just going to turn off um, uh, if I can find it there it is is it that one Oh, I don't know. Zen mode. There we go. That's what I wanted. So that it, it doesn't pop up so many little things when I hover over. 
the UI. Okay, so so this is pretty common. Um, this is sort of idiomatic Go that you have some function that returns a tuple, a thing you're interested in, and an error object. Um, and then you do this thing, you know, if error is nil, then you can assume that uh, that this function succeeded. Um, if the error isn't nil, you need to handle the error. Um, so it looks like inside new app, we're getting this error about not being able to um, not being able to get the current working directory. If I just command click on new app, it will jump me into the. Oh look, and there's look. So. So this is um, new app is doing some stuff which we probably don't care about, and then it's doing dir name comma error uh, equals os dot get working directory. And if the error is not nil, then it's returning uh, the app object and the error. And this is probably where this is failing. Um, if, if I was a better developer, I would set a breakpoint here and I would work out how to run this through a debugger um, so that I could um, pause in VS Code when uh, I hit that line. Um, but I'm far too lazy for that. So what I tend to do is just put little caveman debug things in. Put a little clown emoji face and say, oops. All right. So if we recompile this and then trial steps to reproduce again, if we see clown face oops, then we, you, we'd be fairly confident that it's it's this line here um, that that is ultimately triggering the, the crash. This error is indeed not nil where it should be. Uh, so where are we? So we ought to go into Ubuntu. We want to do go build. And then we want to do the same uh, repro steps. Uh, CD into delete me. Remove. Ooh. Uh, remove that and then run lazy git. Boom. Okay, so it still crashes and now we get clown face oops. So that's it. This is this is fundamentally where the um, error is. We're getting an error when we call this os.getWorkingDirectory. Um, so let's get rid of that little bit of caveman debugging and uh, go back to where I was previously, which was here. So, the, so when we call new app here, we're getting a non-nil error. So this block of code doesn't get executed because error is not nil. It's this block of code that gets executed. And then it says if so there's this function known error and um, it's saying if if that error message I mean the, what, what I would assume this means by looking at it is if this error message is a known message so we're calling this function which returns two values an error message which is a string and known which is a boolean and so this construct here is saying is saying um, execute that thing, execute the known error. And then if having executed that known is true, then we do this. We just log the error message. If it's not a known message, then we're wrapping it, whatever that means. And we're generating a stack trace. OK, and then we're like printing out, we're logging, we're logging the stack trace. Sorry, the dog is here under my feet again. What are you doing? He's, um, no, he's been debugging his squeaky toy and uh, he's got another squeaker out of it. What's going in the bin, Murph? Shame on you. Um, 
OK, so it sounds like if we can make this error message that we're getting a sort of a known error, then we can have it just display a nice clean error message rather than showing a stack tray. So that's that's the behavior that um, has been suggested in the issue. Program should exit gracefully with an error. And it's quite possible we, we do that and then we raise a pull request and um, the the repo owners say well they you know they'd rather not do that they'd rather the program doesn't exit at all which is the behavior that you get on mac os we saw that at the start of the video um but but this feels this feels reasonable um this definitely feels better than printing a stack trace so so let's have a quick let's have a look at this so so what's going on inside known error um, okay, so error. Um, so the error that gets passed in, which is of type error, which is which is a a, a Go interface that has at least a function called error with a capital E that returns a string. So when we call that error function on err, e r r we'll get back a string error message. And then it looks like there's a couple of things going on here. There's like known, oh, sorry, he's got, <laughs> I'm just gonna lock him out. He's, he's brought the squeaky toy uh, to share with me and um, uh, we don't want squeaking. Um, OK, so you've got this known error messages thing here and then you've got this thing. If if known error messages contains the error message that we've got, then just return that error message directly. Otherwise. And that that looks like it's a this error message is coming out of this translation set. So presumably that error message is in different languages, depending on whether depending on, on which, what your preferred locale is. So that's probably an error message being generated from within, from within lazy get itself. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, uh, you know, English only speaking Englishman here. So I, I get to go through life as a software developer, like an Italian uh, pianist, you know, everything is written in my language and um, I never have to worry about things being translated. But but that's that's what I'm guessing there. Let's have a look at this, actually, if we zip through. Um, yes, OK, look, so this is definitely a, this is definitely a lazy git specific error message, isn't it? Git version must be at least that. Um, please upgrade, raise an issue at Jesse Duffield slash lazy git slash issues for lazy git to be more backwards compatible. Okay, so so that looks like it's definitely a lazy git specific issue. And so, and then we've got these mappings down here, which these, this looks more like the sort of message you get from, um, well, in this case, from Git itself, right? Like, I think that's the message you would get if you went to um, your home directory and did did Git status or something. Yeah, fatal, not a Git repository. Um, oops, oh yeah, okay. where we were. So it sounds like this might be the right place to go where we if we add an error mapping from this error um, maybe that string there I think um, let's copy that and give it and and return a string 
then it will show the string that we return instead of the stack trace. That's how I'm reading this. Let's try it. Let's do, if we do original error is like that, a new error. Now clearly it's meant to be something coming from the translation set. So it's going to be a string that, that can be translated into other languages. But for now, I'm just going to stick a, um, a another clown face emoji message uh, in just to... Uh, OK, so my theory is that now if we do the same steps to reproduce, rather than getting the whole stack trace, we'll just get that message there. OK, let's let's give that a go. Um, I'm going to pause again because now he's barking. He is, he is a terrible production assistant, Murphy. Uh, bear with me. OK, uh, he's in with me now. He's lying down with his favourite rope toy and uh, he's on strict orders to be quiet. So, uh, OK, so we're, we're in Ubuntu here. I'm going to rebuild Lazy Git and then let's try the repro steps again so make a temporary directory cd into it remove it and then run lazy git hey there we go and now instead of a stack trace i'm just seeing the error message that i put in down here so the final step would be to declare something in this translation file so um, so let's say we want something like tr dot um, no such file or directory and that obviously doesn't exist yet but if we go to not a repository I'm just going to add it straight after there and then where not a repository was defined in English I'm going to go straight after there um, and type uh, now what are we going to type okay I'm, I'm, I'm changing my mind here I mean this isn't simply a message saying that a file or directory doesn't exist it's an error specifically saying that the working directory doesn't exist so let's change that let's call that uh, um, working directory does not exist that might be a, a better a better one and then let's go up where i added it up here going to change that to be working directory does not exist and oops and down here call it working directory does not exist and our English translation would be um, current working directory does not exist okay let's try that now uh, stop doing that just just build again okay and now make a temporary directory cd into it remove the temporary directory and run lazy git and there we go, we just get an error saying the current working directory does not exist, which is which is correct. So um, uh, happy days. Let's submit a pull request and see what happens. I'll come out of my Linux um, virtual machine now. And um, in fact, let's use lazy git to um, to submit this. There we 
we go. So we've got two changes. There's errors. There's our, there's our um, new entry in the known errors mapping uh, that maps um, the uh, error message to a human friendly trans uh, human friendly message and there's the declaration of that of that translatable string um, so that's it press c to commit uh, say um, show a friendly error message when starting Existent or existent? Uh, not quite sure. And the um, issue is three minutes, I think. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we can push. go and uh, if I click that link there then we've got a oh it is non-existent oh that's irritating isn't it um, Let's create it as a draft for now, because I'm going to go and um, there we go. Cool. Okay. I'm going to go and tidy that up a little bit, and then uh, move it out of draft. And uh, you can um, follow along here if you like. We're in Jesse Duffield, Lazy Git, pull request 3192. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Let me know if you found this useful and if you'd like me to uh, record more of these in future. Cheers.